Hi everyone, I'm Richard and this is the classic MSI version of the GTX 970, a frankly historic piece of PC hardware. When it came out, it blew away AMD's entire high-end range. It duked it out with NVIDIA's own GTX 780 Ti. And yet, yeah, overclock it and you've got GTX 980 performance or something very close to it, all for just $330. So the question is this, can the GTX 1070 repeat the trick? Well, the answer is yes, and also kind of no, too. What we have here is the Founders Edition of the card, essentially Nvidia's reference model. Physically, it looks pretty much like the GTX 1080 with the same port configuration, the same backing plate, and the same 8-pin power input. Internally, the cooler has been downgraded a touch though. The 1080's vapor chamber isn't here, but it's still very quiet and reasonably cool too. And at the silicon level, it's essentially a cut-down version of the higher-end model and the cutbacks are quite a lot more substantial than the ones we saw in the 970. So, for example, we lose 25% of the overall shader count, memory bandwidth drops by 20%, and clocks are tweaked a touch lower too. So the question is, is the 1070 worth it? Well, let's take a look at the generational leap that Nvidia has actually delivered here. So, this is the division running maxed out at 1080p resolution, and we're going to kick off with the GTX 770 here, which is essentially the GTX 680 with boost clock tweaks and faster memory. Frame rate goes as low as 18 FPS, but the average isn't really so bad at 30. Now, let's bring in the 970, and you can see just how much of an improvement we got there. It's 66% faster, and of course, it has twice the amount of VRAM too. So, just how much faster is today's GTX 1070? Well, it's 56% faster than the 970 in this title, and 158% faster than the old GTX 770, and that's not bad. In fact, Nvidia is claiming that this card offers up performance on par with Titan X. So yeah, actually the 1070 is mostly faster in the tests we carried out. In fact, let's add the Titan X to the division comparison we have here. So yeah, you can see that it's about, I don't know, 6% faster overall. The GTX 1080 was really exciting because it pushed back new barriers in terms of performance, and better still, it managed to do that across the whole gamut of different resolutions. But GTX 1070 doesn't have quite the same wow factor. It's a value play, and it's a damn good one, offering frankly stupid levels of performance at an attractive price point. But there is that price hike to $380, and another $80 on top if you go for the Founders Edition. And remember the 970's party trick of overclocking to 980 performance levels? Well, you're not going to get that here. GTX 1080, well, it's an absolute monster, and Nvidia has worked hard to protect the value of that price premium. So here's a look at how the 1070 overclocks based on some 1440p benchmarks we put together. Now, we're using offset overclocking here, so there is the argument that we're perhaps not getting the most out of the new features with GPU Boost 3.0. However, what's clear from our testing is that even if you really push that core clock, this GPU isn't really going to push beyond 2 GHz. Whether it's the thermals or much more likely the power limit, you can keep on upping that core clock offset, but the actual GPU itself will still settle around the 2 GHz level. The GDDR5 RAM on the other hand, well you already get 8 GHz effective here. I pushed this up easily to 9.4 which is not bad at all. In fact it's within striking distance of G5X on the GTX 1080 which is quite remarkable. The end result? Well we're looking at about 14% of additional performance here with plus 140 MHz to the core clock and plus 700 to the RAM. Now that core increase in particular might seem a little bit low, especially compared to the Maxwell era OCs we saw on reference cards. But as I said, you can push that core higher, but certainly in the case of this review card, the actual results won't exceed that 2 GHz limit. Now perhaps we'll see something a little different, a little better perhaps from partner cards. So let's wrap this up then. Will the GTX 1070 radically shape up the GPU market in the way its predecessor did? Well, perhaps not. It's a touch more expensive and its overclocking prowess isn't quite so impactful as its predecessor. But the bottom line is that Nvidia promised Titan X level performance for this particular product. And in that respect, it's not only delivered, in many ways it has over-delivered. Bottom line is, it's the faster card overall. Now, just like the Titan X, I think you'll struggle to run the latest titles effectively at 4K with it. 
but for every other single screen application, this GPU offers a phenomenal amount of performance. It may well be the case that it has been cut down significantly from the GTX 1080, but unlike its predecessor, there's no funny business with the VRAM here. And in fact, with eight gigs of very, very fast VRAM on tap, you're more effectively future-proof than the alternatives that are available on the market right now. So that's GTX 1070 then. We have a massive, and I mean massive, bunch of gaming benchmarks elsewhere on the channel, and they're all linked in the video description below. But in the meantime, that's all I've got for you. Do like and subscribe to support the work we do. But for now, thanks for watching.